This is Lego Football. We're about to take a look at the Serie B playoff final. Carlo Ancelotti has conquered Europe yet again. An interview with the Sutterol coach that's broken all the records. An end of season look at Napoli. And it's North versus South in the Serie C playoff final. <laughs> We will see you in Serie A, chat the Monza players after defeating Pisa in that brilliant Serie B playoff final on the weekend. Let me give you a little bit of insight into Monza's history, promoted to Serie B in 1951 for the first time and stayed there for 19 years. They were almost promoted to Serie A in the 1969-70 season, but lost to Varese on the final day in 2022. They have finally achieved that under Giovanni Stroppa and Adriano Galliani. They will be there. Their owner, Silvio Berlusconi, he's back. Giovanni Stroppa has delivered for Monza this time. With me today is the contributor for Football Italia, the Fiorentina official website and host of the official Inter podcast in English, Richard Hall. How's it going? What a game that was. Incredible game. Unbelievable. What an advert for Serie B, no? A Serie B playoff final. I mean, we all remember when Venezia got promoted last season. There's those iconic images of the Venezia fans out in the canals. But now the best Serie B season that I've ever seen. And I've been following the Italian second division for a long, long time. Pisa looked as though they were going to do this. I mean, they were down 2-0 in the first leg. They scored in the 93rd minute to bring it back to 2-1 and just grasp onto something. Second leg starts inside 50 seconds. Tore Grossa brings it back to 2-2 on aggregate. Herd Manson, the Icelandic international defender, brings it to 3-2 in favour of Pisa in the ninth minute of the second leg. And then it all happens from there. 4-3, an away win for Monza. They won all four playoff uh, semifinals and finals to get to Serie A. Incredible. It was, and I think that... I think- you tweeted it. I, I, I'm sure you did. It was something along the lines of the fact that it's very difficult to not like any of these teams. But when Toro Grosso scores that goal, the Expressio man and Sampdori man, you're thinking, OK. And I, like you, I was leaning on the side of Pisa thinking they're going to go through. But I think Monza are going to be quite interesting to watch next year. They're going to be entertainers because they do have a squad. I think of the two sides, Pisa and Monza, Monza have the side more equipped at this point. But Monza, they do have some of the hardened veterans, Marone, and they have Gabriel Paletta and uh, some really good players such as the Danish striker who was instrumental in Monza's promotion, which is uh, Christian Gitkaya, and also Danny Motta, the, the Portuguese attacker, Patrick Churia, these are names that most people don't know about unless they've been following Serie B. As a commentator, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Some of these fixtures, um, you know, Spal and Parma, they finished down in the bottom half of the table. We saw Crotone bounce from Serie A to Serie B to Serie C in the space of 13 months. This game here, 4-3, we saw goals from Torre Grossa, Hedmanson to make it 2-0. Jose Machin for 2-1. Uh, Gitke came off the bench and equalised in this game to bring it back to 4-3 on aggregate. Mastinu in the 90th minute. How sensational was that one, Richard? That was incredible. The tempo of the game is really good as well. I think that people have had a really bad view of Serie B over the seasons. A lot of people, when they talk about Serie B, go, loads of red cards, terrible pitches, slow. I've always had a really good experience with Serie B, where he was watching Grassetto, when they had that amazing season with Pinola. I've just talked to you off air about Carl Lafferty at Palmer. Uh, sorry, it's at Palermo, sorry. I've watched it haphazardly a little bit this season, probably not as detailed as you, but uh, maybe because of the broadcasting, a couple of teams, obviously I've followed Palmer because they, they've, um, you know, they've been on a lot. Uh, Como, especially because of Mola TV and all the sponsorship there, I've been very close to Como. But again, what's been nice is, you know, you've seen like Cremonese, it's been very good this season. Brescia, I've, I've enjoyed. Um, but the, but this game, um, I think that if people just go and watch the highlights, I think they'll be so impressed with the quality of goals this game produced. Marone scoring that header to bring Monza back into the uh, aggregate lead. And then, of course, that error at the back 
by the Pisa captain, but in Delhi was the heartbreaker for me. That was a bad one. Gitke rounded it off with um, his, I think it was his fifth goal of the playoffs. And they only played four games, uh, finishing third or fourth. For those of you who know the SETI B playoff rules, third or fourth, you have a little bit more of an advantage to progress through and qualify for SETI A. And Pisa finished third in this regular season. Monza finished fourth. They both finished on 67 points. Therefore, in this particular final, we had to have extra time and it would have gone to penalties if it was still level after the two legs were finished. A historical moment for Italian football. Giovanni Stropper, it's his return to the top flight. He was with Crotone. Uh, sliding doors in a way. Um, he's going back up to Serie A with a new club. Crotone is now down into the third division. And Serie C has also been amazing this season, but uh, that's another discussion. Is this the second coming of Silvio Berlusconi and Adriano Galliani? <laughs> Do you want my opinion or Silvio's opinion? Because Silvio's opinion uh, the other day was, I want to win the Serie A and Champions League with Monza. Sounds realistic. It sounds mm-hmm. realistic. Where's his helicopter? Yeah. Where's the ride of the Valkyries? What he did for, for Milan in that time frame, we all know the story. Unbelievable what he did there for Milan. And he built a club that we all still respect today, even from an Inter perspective. But, you know, he knew that the time football had overtaken him, uh, the world had overtaken him, finances had overtaken him. It's like, for me, he's retired and done it in minuscule. And, you know, he's got the boys back together. He's got Galliani back and they've gone and done it with Mons. But actually, it's a very serious thing what he's done. And to bring them up now, and if you can support them and financially, and also they can be clever in their transfers and the way they run that club. Yeah, you know, I'm not, look, he's not going to win City out of Champions League, but he could potentially keep them make them sorry into a, into a good city our club and i think yeah well look at kiev or verona back in 2004 exactly. they they came from the second division and and next thing european football Berlusconi and galliani they leave after selling in 2017 ac milan mm-hmm. they become the chairman of monza and of course Berlusconi, the owner galliani's now 77 years old he's born in monza and just like you're saying, this is their little retirement project. It's It could be Milan 2.0. And Berlusconi, his nickname is Il Cavaliere, which is the knight. Is he Monza's knight in shining armour? It's interesting you mentioned the knight because I'm just thinking back about Chievo's strip. Whilst he might be saying to the press, because obviously Berlusconi likes to be out there and saying the big things that people want to hear. Like I said before, you know, we'll win City out with Monza. You probably won't, let's be honest. But at the end of the day, what he could very well do, and more importantly for Italian football, is to put um, a team in a very attractive region of, you know, very close to Milan, of course, Monza, um, and have a team that could sustain themselves in City A. And like you we'll said... We'll think of the derbies with Inter oh, and, and Milan. Absolutely, absolutely. It just gives it that little bit of prestige. And... Um, so it will be interesting, but yeah, I mean, what I lots of people chuckled, lots of people laughed when Berlusconi took over uh, at Monza. But right now, you look at it and you go, like, just as you said before, David, this looks like a, sustain, a sustainable project. It absolutely does. Monza, they could have been automatically promoted. They had a really good period where they got six wins from seven in February and March to really push for direct promotion. Then the Bianco Rossi, on the final day, they lose. They deny themselves that opportunity and they make it tough on themselves. Four matches they needed to win. They beat Brescia in the two legs of the semi-final. Both were 2-1 wins. They win 2-1 against Pisa at home. They did it away. Huge things for Monza coming. Pisa, I'm so torn. If if Pisa won this and, and got promoted... I would have been just as happy. But Luscorni is going to be back in there. It's going to be entertaining. And as an interista yourself, Richard, I mean, there's just that little bit of feeling in the gut there, that Milan Inter feeling. Maybe Monza, he might be out to bring down Inter and help out Milan in the in the, in the next season to to get them to a second uh, consecutive scudetto. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, well, there's no conspiracy theories in Italy, is there? So I'm not going to say anything. Never. It will be entertaining. It is. It is has that little bit of a, that derby feel, which is great. And, uh, you know, you can imagine Bill Scully thinking, right, I'm going to take down my my old colleagues and I'm also going to take down the old enemy at the same time. Yeah, and Bergamo's down the road as well. Atalanta, Monza. Of course, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
And Cremonese is about an hour, hour and a half uh, southeast, if my geography is right, from Milan. So, yes. And can I just say, just on very quickly touching on that, great for Cremonese to be back. Uh, I know you got, I always have memories of Viali at Cremonese. I'm almost that old. Um, for Jancic, yeah, Garcia. John Aloisi, the Italo Australiano. John Aloisi, yes. Forza Aloisi. Actually, I might just mention quickly, he, he won his first uh, A League title as an A League coach with Western United in Australia uh, a couple of days ago. So, congratulations oh, to the former Cremonese yeah, man. Absolutely. So, Cremonese back in. Lecce for me, uh, again, you know, as well, back in there. Uh, an Italian friend of mine, by the way, is a Benevento supporter and said that their recent run of form allowed everyone else to to get in there. So he, he did. I agree with him because I, I commentated Pisa's game against uh, Benevento a few weeks back. It was 5 1 for Benevento. They absolutely thrashed Pisa around from start to finish. Uh, what a side. They've got La Padula, Forte, they, they brought in on loan. Uh, Acampara is my favourite midfielder in Serie B. He was with Spezia last season. He went to Benevento. He is the architect. As far as I'm concerned, without Acampara in, 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 in their side, that would have been a, a very different outfit to watch. They will come, and, and they are going to come against Genoa, Venezia, uh, Pisa is still going to be there, Perugia, Ascoli, uh, Spal, all these sides that are desperate to get back into the top flight. It's going to be unbelievable. You know, apart from talking, uh, always Serie A with you and you wait for competitions in other podcasts, uh, such as the Gentleman Ultra. And, you know, I've heard you on your official inter-English uh, speaking podcast. You are one of those people that watches a lot of Serie B and Serie C a lot of people were tweeting me on how to watch this game because some people don't even know that Serie B's broadcast. Serie C is as well. Tell me how you watch those games. Yeah, well, I'm a bit of a weirdo because I, um, <laughs> I, you know, even living in the UK, I've not watched one single English football game this year. And if there was sort of Liverpool, Manchester United on the TV, I'd be on my phone or something watching um, Serie B or C. It came from a long time ago when um, the Italian football was off the air in the UK and I was almost petitioning Satanta Sports at the time, I think it was, to get it on. And fortunately, next season they did. That's not my fault, by the way. That just that was a total coincidence. And so I'm always looking for City of B and City of Chia and I was got very lucky. I know we had a conversation, David, about this word. Mola TV. I can't believe how good Mola's it is. Mola's great. And that they were showing four games per round for, for most of the season. From and, and, Yeah, and In America, you've got Fox Sports Soccer that show it. And uh, in various other locations around the planet, there's they've, they've got the licenses to, to show City of Beast. Absolutely. And it was brilliant. And so Mola TV, not only did it give us that, it gave us a Como documentary, which is absolutely insightful. Uh, the Qualiarella documentary, which was also uh, absolutely brilliant. And then also 196 Sports. It cost you about £6 a month, which for me is brilliant because, I, look, I'm still trying to improve my Italian. And so I like to listen to a lot of it in Italian commentary. I'd rather watch like... A, Rather than that Liverpool United game, there's me on 196 Sports watching Sutterol because I like the backdrop. But it's 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 one of those. But it's great to have for six pounds you can watch, and I'm not on commission, but you can watch Mola TV for nothing. Yeah, and yeah, Mola TV is free. And, um, and speaking of Sutterol, I've just interviewed the current coach Ivan Yavorcic, so that's coming up later on this uh, show. That's superb. Um, now. I wanted to touch on something else with you. Since we're on the subject of Serie B and Serie C, you are the host of the Inter podcast in English. There have been some players out on loan sent from Inter Milan to Serie B, to Serie C. Just a quick focus on these players. Uh, one of them actually played in the playoff final, Pirola, at the back, 14 appearances for Monza. Um, he played a, a fair few games. He was injured and then he came back and Giovanni Stropper counted on him throughout the playoffs. He had knee surgery this season in January. Amazing to come back from that. Uh, he missed from November to February. He started both legs of the semi-final against Brescia as well. Do you think that he might be a chance at the very young age, I think he's 20 years old, do you think he might be recalled by Simone Inzaghi or do you think he's he's ready for another season at a lower club, whether it be Monza or another city of B club? I think we've had this we, I mean, we've had this conversation before on the podcast, David. Where you know, unfortunately, whilst he might be ready that to, to play for Inter, I think he's got the talent that he will probably be back on loan because at twenty, you know, they don't trust him. 